Hello there, my name is Dan from New Mexico Rocketry Reviews. Today we're going to be going over the next video in our series, the Model Rocket Motor Test Stand. In this video we're going to give you some details about a ton of updates we did to this Model Rocket Motor Test Stand. Some of the updates include a larger motor mount, faster data, and we used code provided by some contributors. So, let's get started. So here are some updates or the update history of our model rocket test stand. So the first version was just where we had a kitchen scale and a motor mount glued on and a camera recording the display of the kitchen stand. Obviously that didn't work and it was a very primitive design. Now version 1.4 was the first version that we um, actually used an Arduino and a Wheatstone bridge load cell. So that one, we got the kitchen scale and we used the four single point load cells inside the kitchen stand and hooked it up to the Arduino. And that was still slow because the load cells in the kitchen scale were ineffective. So then we moved on to version 2.6. This version used an LCD, a new single point load cell, and it featured an LCD with Christmas lights. This version only fit 18 millimeter motors, but it was slightly more responsive, but still slightly inaccurate as well. It had pretty much the same code as version 1.4. Now this version, version 3.1. This was about the largest and final update so far. It added a motor mount that could accommodate 18 millimeters, 24 millimeters, and 29 millimeter motors. It also featured improved code that reduced data processing down from two hours to two minutes thanks to the code provided by Jared Heron. Card in the upper right hand corner if you want to learn more about that new code. Anyways, this version also measured faster and more accurately and gave us the total impulse readings as well. So let me show you some features of this test stand. So first we have the, LED, the um, Christmas lights that will be turned on using a potentiometer. And then um, the new motor mount has tons of ejection holes. That way the ejection charge can safely be deposited. Along with that, the um, LCD display is updated that way we can debug the uh, code easier uh, in the field in case there's any problems. Alright so those are the updates. Um, just wanted to tell you guys once we get to 100 subscribers we're going to be starting a series on weather ballooning. These videos will include how to make your own weather balloon and it'll show you a ton of footage from our own weather balloon launch. So make sure to hit that subscribe button that way we can get to that goal. We're super close. We're getting about one subscriber a day so we'll be there soon so make sure to hit that subscribe button right now alright so in case you don't know how our model rocket test stand works here is how it works so pretty much we have this single point load cell right here and that is the instrument that's actually measuring the thrust so what they use the single point load cells use they use resistors in a Wheatstone bridge configuration so let's say my finger is the load cell if the rocket motor is pointing upwards, it will push the load cell and slightly bend it and that will let some current go through these resistors inside the load cell. That, then the current will go to a load cell amplifier. The purpose of the load cell amplifier is so that the signals from the load cell can be amplified that way our Arduino can read the data. If it wasn't for the um, load cell amplifier, the Arduino wouldn't be able to read the data.
So after we finished the tests, we got the data from the serial monitor on the Arduino and we directly copied and pasted it into Google Sheets. Thanks to our updated code, that saved us about two hours of time. So let's go through the data together. So the graph on the right shows you the thrust curve that we got from the SD's F150 motor. If you'd like to see this graph and all the data points in more detail, there is a spreadsheet down in the description. But anyways, if you compare it to NAR data and the SD's official website graph, the graph looks almost identical. So let me give you all the points of data. So according to SD's, the total impulse of the F150 motor is 49.61 newton seconds and the maximum thrust is 25.26 newtons. Our test stand measured a total impulse of 48 newton seconds and gave us a max thrust of 30 newtons. Again, there's much more detail. If you look down in the description, there's a link to a Google Sheets that will give you more detail. All right, so now we're going to demonstrate to you how the motor test stand works and our exact procedure that we use when we're testing this thing out. So before we do anything like upload the code, we would have the motor inside the motor mount along with the clips attached. That way they, the load cell doesn't account for the motor or the clips. So after we have those attached, we would upload the code. And in case any of you are wondering, the motor isn't recessed down too far. It's actually, a, it's actually slightly lower than the edge of this pipe. That way we don't get the Krushnik effect. So anyways, now that the co code is uploading, we can get a calibration weight ready. So we're just gonna use an iPhone in this case. When we're actually on the field, we have precise calibration weights. That way we can have accurate results. So now that it's done uploading, we can go ahead and open the serial monitor. There we go. And then now it's gonna start up and we can tear it. And now we can place my iPhone as the uh, calibration weight. This weighs 178 grams. And then it's going to give us a, a calibration value right here. So we can copy that right there. And we can just double check that this thing is the right calibration code by just putting Y into the serial monitor. And now it's reading 177.8, around 177 for um, the weight of the iPhone, which is correct. So now that we have the calibration value copied, we can go over and open the actual um, new code that actually measures the thrust for this rocket engine. So we go over here. Oh, that's the wrong code. Whoops. Oh. There we go. Yeah, there. That's the right code. So now we can go over down here, and then the calibration value that we got from the previous code, we can just paste it right there, 415.60. And now we can upload that code. And now our load cell is properly calibrated, so we don't want to bang it around or anything. So now we can just open the serial monitor, and then I'll say first column is the time elapsed, the second column is going to be the thrust in newtons, and the third column is the total impulse of the rocket motor. So then we would have a wireless keyboard, and then we'd get all the cameras up and running, and then we do the countdown, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, and start the data processing. And then we would have the rocket motor go off, and it would measure the thrust. And then once, it, once it's finished, we would just stop it, and then copy all these values, and then go to Notepad, and then paste it. So this is all the values that I pasted from... Uh, the test that we did yesterday. So these are the actual values for an F150. So then what we would do is we would copy all these values, which takes a while. Copy all these. And the reason this has four columns is just because um, this was directly pasted from a Google Sheet, so it had adjusted time values. I'll explain more later. So now that that's copied, we can go over to a spreadsheet and this is the beautiful part. Instead of having to spend two hours manually putting in all the points and adjusting all the timestamps, we can just push two keys. There we go. So the reason I had four columns is because before um, I actually started recording, I adjusted the time. So this was the time that was shown in the serial monitor right here. Oh, and that we weren't 97 seconds in. So I just subtracted that value for each of these. That way we actually have the correct time values. 
and then this is a thrust, and this is a total impulse. So now we can just make a graph by copying these. And this takes a while. There we go. So now these are copied. We can just press insert and then chart. And then bam, that's our graph right here. And that's pretty accurate to the data that SDs got and NAR got. So if you want to check out all these data points for yourself, you can go ahead. There's a link in the description and it will open this document right here which will give you just a little brief um, summary there. It will give you the data from version 1.4 and then 2.6 and then finally the data that we got. So this will give you total impulse and then it will give you average thrust, max thrust. So if you want to go check that out, link is down in the description. So in conclusion, this rocket motor test stand, version 3, was our most successful rocket motor test stand so far. And so far it's the only motor test stand that worked versions 1.4 and 2.6 and the ones before that were all failures I guess except that we learned a lot from those motor test stands and those led us to this final version. We plan to keep updating this test stand that way we can make it better and then show you how to make yours better as well. So make sure to check out the videos on how to make a model rocket motor test stand if you want to make your own and check out all the other videos in this series that way you can learn about how the code works and about how this rocket motor test stand works. So make sure to subscribe, that way we can hit that goal of 100. And then if you'd like to support us, check out our Patreon in the link in the description. For just $1 a month, you can unlock a ton of awesome benefits such as one-on-one -on -one help on your model rocket test stand, and weekly updates, and exclusive photos and videos, along with much more. So make sure you check out that link. Also, we have a new website which will give you more information on all our projects and rockets and that link is also in the description. Along with that, check out our Facebook link for frequent updates and a ton of cool pictures. So, other than that, have a great day.